just as we did with z-scores, it's time for us to put everything together that we've learned so far in order to find the x values and the areas for a normal curve. So we have a researcher for Consumer Reports tests a large number of home ovens that are set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. The actual temperatures of the ovens were normally distributed with a mean of 348.1 degrees Fahrenheit and a standard deviation of 6.3 degrees Fahrenheit. This, this distribution is shown below with some areas shaded that are not equal in size. The reason I'm telling you it's not equal in size is because I don't want you to try to use symmetry, which is what we did in 7.1. Um, we're actually using stack crunch to do this. Okay, so again, I've given two values. Two values are just known and given in the problem. And we have to find the remaining three. And it's kind of up to us which way we want to go. Um, we could find this area first, or we could find... Well, actually, I think we have to find this area first because we can't find this area until we know these two areas and we can't find this x value until we know this area. So we're going to have to find this area first. All right, so let's do that. So area three, well, I want to find an area and I know an x value. So if I think back to my technology table here, I want to find an area and I know the x value, right, from a known x value. So I'm looking for area. That's the one I'm looking for. That's in the one in the red box. So this is what I'm going to do. So I put the mean and standard deviation in, and then I'll put the x value in, and it will give me the area. Now, the thing is, the direction arrow, the, the symbol less than or greater than, will have to change, because I'm actually talking about a right area here, not a left. Keep in mind, I can't show you all the symbols when I do this box, so you just have to, <laughs> you have to change your symbols based on the problem that you're working on. All right, so let me grab stack crunch is over here. All right. Oop, and I have the normal curve already there, but I'll just remind you how to find it. So stat, calculators, normal. There it is. Now the mean was 348.1. The standard deviation was 6.3. And I know the x value is 353.654. And I don't want to click compute yet because I want to change that direction because I want it to go to the right side. And there it is. And I get that the area is 0.189. And you should also just do a gut check. I mean, look at it. Does it look like what it looks like on the page? Because I drew them with computers on the page, so they should look similar, similarly. And they do. All right, so that's the one. So I'm going to write that down. So the probability that x is greater than or equal to, oh, what was it? 2, 7, or 3, 5, 3, sorry. 3, 5, 3. Uh, 0.654 equals 0 0.189. All right, so that's that answer. Lovely, wonderful. Okay, so now let's find this area over here because I know that the three areas have to add up to one. They have to. Okay, so if I take one and I take away the known areas of 0.764 as well as 0.189, if I subtract those both from here, I'll be able to find it. And that's a Desmos issue, so let me grab Desmos. All right, so there's the one I did from the z-score. 1 minus 0 0.764, take away 0 0.189, and I get 0 0.047. So 0 0.047, that's my area. There we go. Okay, so now I know that this is 0 0.047. That's the answer, and I know 0 0.189 is the answer. Oh, I should have put a red box around it. That was the answer, this part. There we go. And then this part's the answer. All right, so now what about this x value? Okay, well, going back, if I want to find an x value from an area, the x value is the part that I'm going to find, so that's got the red box, so I'm going to put the area in. Okay, but this time I do want it to face left because I'm talking about a left tail area. Okay, so let me grab StatCrunch again. 
Okay, so the mean is still 348, the standard deviation is still 6.3. Those haven't changed. What has changed is I want to talk about left tail area, and I want that area to be 0 0.047, what we just found. And there you have it. So we get 337.5, 0 0.549. Three three seven point five four nine equals zero point zero four seven. The answer is this part in here. That's what we were looking for. Oh, it says it wants one decimal place for the x. Sorry, I didn't see that. So we will just round this then to three three seven point five. Well, I'll just I'll just round it in here because that'll be the answer. There we go. I take it back. I wanted one decimal place. Okay, so we got three decimal places for the area. We've got one decimal place for the x, lovely, as asked for. Now, provide two interpretations of x2 and a3, which is this bit over here, right? One using proportion, one using probability. Okay, so proportion. It doesn't really matter here. Proportion. That's where we start off with the percentage. So we say, 18.9% of, now what were these things? These were home ovens set to 350 of home ovens set to, whoop, so I'm trying to put the context in here, set to 350 degrees, have temperatures above, right, above because it's over here to the right, 353.854, is that 854? Oh, 654, my bad. Sorry, I'm looking at it at an angle. So 654 degrees Fahrenheit, right? Oh, I should say of all home ovens. We like to put that all in there just to remind us of our context. So because we're talking about a portion of the group. So 18.9% of all home ovens um, set to 350 have temperatures above 353.654. Okay, so that's the proportion way, right? Remember we learned this at the end of section 7.1, 7 so probability. So that's saying if we choose a random home oven, so if we choose select a random home oven set to 350 the probability the chances that its temperature is above 353.654 degrees Fahrenheit is 0 0.189. They're saying the same thing. It's just it's just the top one is really talking about proportion of the whole, right? This percentage of all the home ovens are over here, as opposed to selecting a single random oven, right? A single random home oven, the chances that it has a temperature higher than 353.654 is 0.189. Now I'm going to show TI-84 folks how to find the values above. If you're not using a TI-84, you can just skip ahead to the next video. All right, T84 folks. <laughs> so let's see here. Let me see if I can do this. So we want to find this value over here first. So that was an area value. So you want to find an area that's a normal CDF question. So you would say second distribution, normal CDF. The left hand edge, the lower limit, is over here. It's 353.654. So we would type that. Three 53.654. The upper is 1e, which we hit second comma to get that, 99, because it's standing in place of infinity. Your mean is 348.1.
your standard deviation is 6.3 and then paste and then press enter and there you have it 0.189 when you round it okay so then um, the area over here find the same way because that's not really using I mean that's just using Desmos so the other one we need to find is over here which if you remember uses inverse norm so um, this will be a left tail area. So this is actually the same with the old calculator as well as the new calculator. So second distribution, inverse norm. Old calculators are always standard point um, for the left tail area. So that'll work for us. So 348.1. Oh, I might have done that wrong. I thought I did 348.3 in the last one. I'll double check that. 6.3, left, paste enter. So I'm, I'm worried I typed the wrong number up here. <laughs> nope, I did it right. 348.1. Nope, we're good. Okay, so sorry. There's inverse norm 0 0.047, 348.1, 6.3 left. And then in an old calculator, it just won't show the, the left part. It'll just assume that it's left. So when you, when you go to do it, second inverse norm, you take, you know, three, oh, what was it? Oh, 0 0.047 and then 348.1 and then 6.3 and then paste it just doesn't it doesn't even bother saying left oh I typed something wrong oh 6.3 not 63 <laughs> let me go put that in there we go you see it doesn't say left at the end the way this one does this one says left at the end because it has that option 